I'm going to go is the most important is the seizures. Now, neurological emergencies, a new net comes to an emergency with seizures. Basically, it's a, a, it can be a primary seizure disorder or it can be a secondary seizure disorder. Now, secondary seizure disorder is related to most of the problems in which we face in the newborns. That is a baby who is um, having a metabolic abnormality, uh, that is hypoglycemia, hypocalcemia, hypokalemia can come in as a seizure episode. A baby who is basically uh, having immunological metabolism can come in a seizure. A baby who is in sepsis uh, can come in a seizure. A baby who has had a trauma can come with an intracranial bleed and a seizure. So they are the secondary, uh, uh, you know, secondary seizures and primary seizures as a, uh, as we see in cases of your uh, involuntary metabolism. So that is what you have to think about. Now uh, the seizures are more frequent in the preterm infants uh, because of HIE when they came, when they are uh, having an hypoxic insult during the uh, you know resuscitation. Abnormal movements uh, occur secondary to withdrawal from maternal drug exposures, commonly opioids. Uh, what are the clinical features? We all know. I'm not going into details. Now, the causes of neonatal seizures in the first day of life. Hypoxic insult, hypoglycemia, hypoglycemia, like I told you, metabolic abnormalities, any drugs, sepsis, uh, trauma which leads to intracranial hemorrhages, pyridoxine deficiencies. Uh, then we go ahead, <clears throat> second day of life, uh, benign familial neonatal seizures, which will be a primary cause, benign idiopathic neonatal seizures, a primary cause of a seizure again. Then congenital anomalies and developmental brain disorders, which can cause primary seizures again. Drug withdrawals, infections, uh, hyperphosphatemia, uh, hypertension, hypocalcemia, trauma, and hyponatremia. These are the metabolic abnormalities. Now, uh, investigation, you have to understand. Uh, first of all, whenever a baby who is coming into an emergency with seizures, uh, first and the foremost thing is, with all the regular investigations which you are sending, do send a blood gas, number one. <clears throat> do send all the uh, electrolytes. Uh, <clears throat> get a blood sugar level done. Get a serum calcium level done. The potassium level done. Uh, phosphatase levels done. Give, get a septic profile done. Uh, once we have all those things, rule out whether the baby was having any problems because of this maternal, uh, sorry, because of this maternal uh, metabolic abnormalities. If that is the cause of seizure, treat them accordingly, treat hypoglycemia, treat hypokalemia, treat hypocalcemia, and then get, go further ahead. If you find that there is any history of a trauma, get a CT scan done or a cranial ultrasound at least as an emergency done. So uh, maternal history, maternal medication, maternal infection, birth history, which is very important. Get a head imaging done. Uh, infectious workup, CSF studies should also be performed. Urine and a mucunium toxicology screen should be done. Now, management of a seizure. Now, there's a lot of confusion right now. Uh, how do we manage a seizure if a baby comes ahead in a divergent food? Now, if a baby comes in an emergency, uh, in pediatric population, uh, the first and the first uh, line of a drug I would say anti-epileptic drug is phenytoin. Obviously, once we have given lorazepam and diazepam and whatever uh, the initial management is. So the first thing in pediatric population is to give uh, phenytoin and then go ahead with liver, uh then go ahead with phenobab, and then go ahead with ventilation and all those things. But in cases of newborn seizures, what the first management is after we give diazepam or lorazepam, which is at a dose of 0.3 to 0.5 mg per kg per dose. You can repeat it to a maximum of 0.5 mg per kg per dose to 1 mg per kg per dose. Even after that, if the seizures are not getting under control, the first line is to go with phenobarbitone, which can be given at a dose of 15 mg per kilogram per day per dose, which can be increased to 20 mg per kilogram per dose. If the seizures do not subside after that, then you go ahead and give liver acetam, which can be again given at a dose of 20 m, 20 to 30 mg per kg per dose, stat, and then incidence of a 5 mg per kg per dose. If that also does not subside the seizure, then you can think about going with valparic, valparin or maybe phenobarbitone, but phenobarbitone, uh, sorry, phenytoin, that can be then started. So same thing, first go with the ABCs, manage the ABCs, if the respiratory system is compromised, like I told you, uh, start with supplemental oxygen with nasal prongs, get a blood sugar measure done, 
hypoglycemia or treat hypoglycemia as i told you the tap test if metabolic disorder is there treat accordingly uh, get the hematocrit electrolytes blood urea nitrogen phosphate ammonia levels and blood cultures like i had get a csf done uh, the first like i told you is lorazepam then comes is phenobarbitone then comes is phenytoin or a phosphinytoin and then if you find that there are refractive refractory status epilepticus then first secure the airway start midazolam infusion and then shift the patient to a pico for further care and management if there are in uh, if you have done all the uh, uh, protocol procedure protocol management you uh, and you find that the child is still in status epilepticus then you think about going to go with pyridoxine vitamin b6 that is to be done and ursaglovir can be added in cases of your viral encephalitis uh, now uh, these are neonatal seizures with the withdrawal syndromes uh, uh, nothing much to be done but normally like i told you the diagnosis is important clinical history and clinical uh, examination and presentation of a baby get an eeg done get an infectious workup done and the ultrasound and ct scan done uh, uh, first lorazepam pinobarb phosphinytoin uh valperin or um uh, liveracetam whatever you prefer then you can go ahead with it. 